Tell me why Steph shouldn't be in the GOAT conversation. Not the greatest point guard of all time conversation or greatest small guard of all time conversation. I think that that's already been deaded. I think he's already staked claim to that. Magic Johnson, I'm sorry. I'm talking about GOAT conversation overall. Because we can talk about defense, size, supporting cast and opportunity, eras. Ultimately, the GOATs are judged on their accolades, their achievements, right? And the moments that they've had throughout their career. And Steph's accolades, stats, and moments stack up against any other player that's ever played the game. You're talking about someone who has revolutionized the game from a shooting standpoint and how it's played today Four NBA championships, MVPs, and then to stack this moment on top of it. We didn't get the King James Sellies at the end of this thing, right? Steph stole the show. I don't know what else there is to say about this dude, man, on that stage. That was, and I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I was nervous with the ball in his hands late as that offense got super stagnant and the game got tight and the turnovers were adding up. We all know his tendency to turn it over with those hook passes. And I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, just, I don't know about this. And yet again, I'm proven not to doubt the chef. I know y'all are in the comments typing right now. Stop doubting him out. Put some respect on his name out. Hey, man. The dude's in the GOAT conversation. He's in the conversation. Let's talk about the game overall. You knew it was going to be this energized, hostile environment in France. I don't want to say with nothing to lose, but, you know, the pressure, like in all these games, is really on Team USA. And you could see it for both sides to start the game. Everybody was a little tight. There was a lot of opened, missed shots early in the game. Um, Jason Tatum. Tatum checks in with the second unit, and I'm happy that he got the opportunity. I, like, it, I, I did feel somewhat bad for him. I am disappointed his fan base didn't get to continue to crash out about it because it's been, it's been kind of fun to watch. I'm not going to lie to you, but it was, it was good to see him get in there. It was very apparent quickly, like the Embiid-Wemby matchup probably doesn't favor us. It, Wemby's just too fleet of foot, and then with his length, Embiid isn't really able to recover on him. I thought it was interesting that they decided to switch everything early, right? And you saw France's coach go to Kubali, who's like, I don't even think he could, he's old enough to drink, right? They, they went young and, and both teams kind of got a little out of pocket with the rotations. The Tatum thing, I guess the question is, what, was it because of all the narrative around him that he got in the game? Right. I'm sure I haven't listened to Steve Kerr's press conference or if he's even given it yet, but he's going to probably say, well, we liked his size against France because they're so long. Right. And he's going to give a basketball reason why he played. But in reality, it, it, it certainly felt like it was because of the narrative and the pressure that Celtic fans and Tatum fans were putting on Team USA and Steve Kerr to get him out there. And it didn't hurt him. Right. Like to his, you know, it was it was fine. But um, Embiid with an early exit. I'm not sure I like the switching because I don't know that their guards, hey, that dude at the end, though, he was cooking. I don't know his name, but I'm not sure their guards had the skill set to really take advantage of the drop coverage that we had been playing. And so right out of the gate, we're doing something that we hadn't really been doing throughout this tournament is doing all that switching. And then you saw the mismatches and then they were closing out on it. Um, but then... What came with Tatum entering the rotation is there were some lineups out there, correct me if I'm wrong, I hadn't seen in the past play together. We already know that that's probably our biggest weakness is, is the chemistry of these lineups and these rotations playing so little minutes together. And so I didn't love Kerr and the coaching staff's decision to roll with these kind of, hey, look at this lineup. We haven't tried this, but we're going to try it in the gold medal game. You know, I don't know about that. But for the most part, we're keeping them at arm's length, right? And Yabuselli, right? That dude, hey, Joe Laker, make the call. Mike Dunleavy, make the call. I, I would, with open arms, welcome Yabuselli to the Warriors, that physicality. And then he's got touch. What's unique about him, what does he go, 280, right? The dancing bear, as they call him. But then he has all this English off the glass, and you see him at the free throw line. He has touch out to the perimeter, so... I expect him to get that call, but he was obviously their best player posting, posterizing LeBron, trying to cut over and take that charge, right? But for the most part, we kept them at arm's length until that fourth quarter where all of a sudden it seemed like 
we stopped playing, right? That was the worst offense I think we have seen all tournament from them to start that fourth quarter. They were just standing and watching, and it felt like it became a little bit too LeBron-centric. I know he took the quick breather, but it felt like, all right, LeBron, you know, you're, you're the captain, Captain America. Um, you got to touch the ball every time. And it was almost as if they were melting the clock. And I don't think Kerr nipped that in the bud as quickly as he should. And his answer was bring Steph back in and that'll bring in some motion, he and Booker, right? But um, it was kind of a take take your turns ISO game that started, D-Wade said it himself, it started too early in the fourth. That's something in the final two and a half minutes of a game, fine. But they were milking the clock with like eight minutes to go. And sure enough, France gets some possession calls, some whistles, Fournier and these guys. It's crazy to watch the patriotism of these players for their country and what that can do for them on this stage of like their competitive spirit and willing themselves to stay in this game, right? Um, but it gets too close for comfort. And all of a sudden, <laughs> again, goat conversation because you got all, you got the big three out there and everyone's looking tight. No one's doing much. And it's Steph Curry who bails Team USA out again. I don't want to say bails them out. But you want to talk about a moment. Again, it's moments we can put up. He's got all the accolades, right? He's changed the game. But now you're talking about on this stage, this is one hell of a moment. And I don't think we talk about that enough, right? Because we, oh, who's the best this, best that? What do you remember? Were you outside when it happened? What do you remember? How many moments have they created of greatness? And again, Steph's resume, it belongs in that penthouse suite with Jordan, with Kareem, with LeBron. You know, it's it's just at another level. And it was funny to watch, you know, um, LeBron and KD. Look, I know everyone, there's a sense of relief, right? I think because of the expectations of winning and keeping the streak alive. But there wasn't a huge selly from LeBron at the end of this because Steph Curry stole the show, man. Amazing, amazing. Um, an amazing Olympics. Track and field, did you see? The, the women's relay, I've never seen <laughs> that large of a gap. I've never seen a, a race where they had to use two cameras to show the, the U.S. and then the rest of the pack. But just an overall outstanding and fun Olympics. And I think that they've, it, they, the Olympic Games, though, uh, are, are going to ride a lot of momentum into this one here in Los Angeles in, in 2028. But yeah, man. I think I still got to let all this digest and I'll, I'll get more into some of the X's and O's and other moments of this game in tomorrow's breakdown, which will be on my patron. But I just wanted to uh, check in with y'all, tap in and give my quick thoughts and reaction to one of the GOAT, Steph Curry, and his Team USA team doing what they do against a very game France team. As far as Wemben Yama goes, um, yeah, it was impressive. What do you have? 20 points? Like he's kind of had a little bit of a disappointing Olympics, but from what I understand, the France team, French team, I should say, as well as a lot of these other teams, you watch Serbia, you watch some of these other teams. I even noticed that with Canada, they, they leaned into SGA a little more towards the end, but it's much more of a team game, right? And they're not going to, it's not a, Hey, clear out for the star and let him dominate the ball all the time. Unless it's Slovenia and Luca, right? Now, even with them. Um, so I, I think that the opportunity maybe hindered some of his numbers overall. I do think people are getting a little ahead of themselves as far as talking about Wemby being an all-timer and, and a goat and all that stuff. Obviously, the proof's in the pudding. You got you to gotta do it. We know the potential is there. But what I would say is I think it's more of he may be one of the more spectacular players of all time, one of the more unique players to watch of all time. But I'm not sure durability-wise, longevity-wise, he'll ever be able to enter any type of GOAT conversation like the three players we watch for Team USA today. Wow, man. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Breakdown in the morning. As always, hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.